Okay, the video I'm making today is really one that was more of a demonstration in class rather than a lab that the students did. And what we are doing is we are using sodium acetate to create a supersaturated solution. And really that's more of a high school level lab, but it shows a great thing uh, as far as a demonstration in regard to an exothermic reaction. However, what we're going to show today with the supersaturated solution isn't so much a reaction as it is the uh, components of the sodium acetate reform the bonds that are basically uh, disassociated as a result of being displaced or actually dissolved in water. And so we're going to talk a little bit after you see what we're going to look at uh, to explain what you see. This is a really fascinating thing. Uh, most all students really enjoy this uh, demonstration because it's really not what they expected. So I want to readjust the camera. We're going to look a little bit closer at what we're dealing with today. Make sure you follow the video to the end because the explanation really answers a lot of the questions about why, why did this happen because in reality this is one of those types of labs that looks like magic happened before your eyes but it certainly can be explained through chemistry and through the bonding of atoms. So watch it all the way through. Okay, what I have here is a test tube that actually was sitting in an ice bath. Basically this beaker with water in it was sitting in a uh, basically a a container with ice wrapped all around it to kind of cool it down a little bit. Um, and you'll find out why that is here in just a little bit. So basically I have a thermometer in the water that was cooling down the, um, the test tube that's in here. And I want to look at its temperature. I don't know if you can tell by the camera. But it's right at 20 degrees, which is right about room temperature. So this has been sitting in here for over an hour. And so the contents of the... Um, of the test tube is also that same temperature. Now if you notice that what's in the test tube is liquid, it looks like it's water, but it's really a dissolved substance of sodium acetate, which is a type of sugar. Now the reason I don't have the thermometer in there right now is for the very reason you'll find out here in just about a second. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use the thermometer to stick inside the test tube, but what I want you to notice is what happens immediately after I put the thermometer in the test tube. So check this out. Okay, there we go. Are you seeing it? I can turn it upside down or sideways. And basically, it is actually hardening as it goes up. Now, the thermometer is actually wedged in there because it created an immediate solid. And so, the temperature now has risen to an amazing 60 degrees. And it is still climbing. So, let's see here. No, I'm sorry, that's 50 degrees. So it went up to about 50. Let's go down into it a little bit further. See what that temperature is. There we go, still rising. So the temperature right now is rising still. Now it's about 58 degrees. Remember, we started at 20 degrees. So we notice a great temperature change in, the, in what has happened here. So this is an amazing thing. It actually turned from a liquid to a solid immediately when I took the thermometer and put it inside of the test tube and so it's no longer uh, the same temperature as the water in the beaker it's definitely much much hotter you can uh, still grab it with your hands but it's definitely hot you can tell it's, it's definitely risen in temperature so we're going to take a minute we're going to look at a dry erase board and I'll kind of explain what's going on uh, with this particular situation why did the temperature change why did it autom automatically go immediately from a uh, liquid to a solid Lots of students think that this actually turns to ice. It's definitely not ice. It's definitely very, very hot. And, but it did go to a solid. So we're going to explain that just right after this moment. Okay, so let's leave what happened. Okay, basically, this is kind of like if you were to add sugar to iced tea. But let's just use water as our example of our solution, okay? So if we have a container, and it's, it has water in it, and I start adding sugar, okay? We're just going to use sugar as our example. So example. And we add sugar to it and the sugar particles start filling up the spaces between the water molecules. Basically that's what dissolving is. And if we keep adding sugar to the water, eventually the spaces between water molecules start to fill up and can no longer hold any more dissolved sugar. So what happens is the sugar remains as a solid and it starts collecting at the bottom of your container. So how can we get that container to hold more sugar? Well, one way we can do it is we can stir it up. 
So if we put a spoon in here or something and start stirring it, then it's going to allow those water molecules to start moving quicker and it allows more space to show up and the sugar gets dissolved. But let's say we want even more sugar. Well, at that point, if we keep adding sugar, it just continues to pile up. We know that even that space has filled up. And so another way we can do it is we can start adding heat. So if we add a little heat to it, what happens is the water molecules start to spread out from each other. So it allows more space. So now the sugar can start filling in those spaces. And so the sugar is in here cramming itself in in a great degree in space that was made available simply because we heated it. Once we get it to a boiling point or a temperature where it can't get any hotter, the molecules cannot get any further apart. So the water molecules are as spread apart as they possibly can be to still maintain their liquid state. So at that point, when we fill in all the space that is available with sugar, now then, let's think about if we cool it down. Once we cool it down, those sugar molecules start to condense again. So they start getting closer back together. Well, those sugar molecules have nowhere to go. So they get compressed. They are just trapped in these very tight spaces to a degree that they can't, they don't even know what to do anymore. It's just, it's, it's beyond what would normally be the possibility. And so that's exactly what's happened was we took sodium acetate, we heated it up, heated up the water, and we kept adding sodium acetate when the water was boiling till it could not hold anymore. And then we cooled it down in an ice bath. Well, so what happens when we add something to it? So when I took the thermometer and shoved it down between the molecules, what happened was it created a chain reaction, basically. What happened was all the sugar molecules that wanted to get together now were forced to actually start recombining their electrons together. Remember how we have uh, compounds form is basically if we have an atom with the outside shell, it wants to um, add or subtract or combine uh, valence electrons with each other to basically form compounds. Well, that's exactly what happened was all these sugar crystals that were in solution wanted to get back together and form a solid. So they immediately form a solid and by so many uh, bonds forming, when we have all these bonds forming, it gives off energy. And we call that an exothermic reaction. So when, it, when, when uh, compounds give off energy in their bonding process, it's called exothermic. Now normally we would consider this a chemical change. It's really not because we simply took the sodium acetate that was in solution and it reformed itself to its solid form. But sometimes we actually have uh, items that we combine together chemically that when they go through that process of recombining, they actually have a chemical change. They form new products, and they also give off heat in an exothermic reaction. A really good example of this would be when you see, uh, like at the stores right now, it's about winter time. It's coming close to winter. It's getting colder out. And you'll see they have those uh, heat warmers you can put in your gloves or your socks to warm up and what happens is when you open the package and you shake them it allows oxygen to kind of get in combination with those chemicals that have been trapped in that packaging and so when you put it in your gloves or your socks and you're moving around that oxygen combines with the chemicals in that powder and causes it to form a new product which in that reaction it heats up and so that's how your gloves and your socks get warm after putting those in there that is an exothermic reaction anyway really a cool lab um, if you're interested in seeing more about it I'm sure you could put uh, a Google search or a YouTube search and just put in sodium acetate uh, super saturated solution. So that's what we did today in our demonstration. Hope you enjoyed the video.